Hey everybody, welcome back to the shed. I'm Troy Shaw, and with me again, as always, is the fabulous Dave Griffiths. What's up, Dave? Yeah, uh, thanks, Troy. How are you doing? Uh, we're definitely in the throes of the dog days of summer, and uh, it's about 100 degrees out here in the shed. So, uh, Brett's uh, with us, and... Uh, it's our first 100 degree day in the shed. Number 17. Well, at least it's, there's no mosquitoes, so that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. It's too hot for the mosquitoes. Yeah, no shit. It's too hot for everybody but us, I guess. <laughs> so let, let's introduce this guy. We got Brett Hendricks uh, in the shed this evening. And uh, how's it going, Brett? It's pretty good. It's hot as shit. I wish y'all would have told me this was in a shed. <laughs> well, I'm in jeans and a cowboy hat. Looks like. Hence the name, In the Shed. Yeah. <laughs> with two Ds, just like Brett, with two Ts. Yes, yes. I, I learned that today. Yes. Oh, yeah, my brother told me about that. He called me. Yeah. <laughs> he put it on Facebook. Well, two yeah. Two Ts. <laughs> yeah. Since there's... Two uh, Ds and two Ds. <laughs> there's some, since there's some drinking here in the shed, we had to card our uh, youngest yeah. guest. And uh, he made the cut as a ripe 21-year-old. Yeah. Welcome, Brett. You're a young guy, but your sound is more mature. Uh, when did you get the music, and who are you, kind of your influences? I got into music. I started playing guitar when I was nine years old, and the story that kind of goes with that is uh, my older brother Chance being a drummer and my drummer now. At the time, he wasn't. I, we had no idea. I asked my brother and dad one day, probably about six months ago. I said, "Did you think ten years ago?" that we would be doing this full time like we are. And they, uh, Chance made the comment, he goes, yeah, I believed I was going to be doing it with somebody else. I didn't think I was going to be doing it with you. But how, um, much, how much older is your brother? My brother is six years older than me. Okay. So, um, but, I, yeah, I started playing guitar when I was nine and uh, started on a little Epiphone Les Paul with the one pickup, and it was great. Uh, the influence back then was uh, Stevie Ray, and that's that. Need. Who turned you on to Stevie Ray? Dad. Yeah. Mainly, uh, Dad was a big or is a big blues fan, and I mean, you go, he does leather work and all that stuff. So anytime you walk into his shop or room or whatever you want to call it, he's he's listening to blues. He's got the blues channel on Direct TV on, and it's got. This, the music rolling. And it's pretty cool. Like I sit, I'll sit there and listen to it with him and uh, shoot the bull. But yeah, he turned me on to Stevie Ray, and uh, I watched. I literally can say Stevie Ray Vaughan was my guitar teacher, next to myself because I sat there and watched Austin City Limits over and over and over again, and it just made sense. And I eventually learned how to play the way he did. But then later on down the line, you know, we started. I started the band when I was 14, and uh, just we didn't want to make it complicated, so we just called it Brett Hendricks Band. And I didn't want to be that guy that was the front man, and the band was named Brett Hendricks. So I said, let's just throw band on it and not be complicated. And I don't ever want to be the guy who, like, I don't mind being the face, but at the same time, I don't want to be treated different than everybody else that's in the band. And that's why every time you come to a show and you see everybody working, you don't see me in the corner with rock star syndrome, not loading in equipment and not yeah. doing stuff. And I you want to share the glory and you don't want to be a prima donna. Exactly. And, uh, but yeah, we started the band when I was 14. And, you know, seven years later, we're still rocking and rolling and trying to make it work. And eventually all those songwriter influences came in and that kind of started with Dirk Bentley and Randy Rogers and Wade Bowen because we were doing the Texas thing and the guitar playing was still a part of it so I was listening to guys like Brad Paisley and Keith Urban when it came to the countryside and then eventually found out who Brent Mason and Johnny Hyatt and all those guys were and just they're Highland not Hyatt and uh, John Hyatt's pretty good too. yeah he is but Johnny Highland is blind chicken picker and he is amazing and uh but yeah lately it's been if you listen to some of the stuff that's on the new record and even the stuff that i plan on putting on the next record that we do it's you know more jason isbill and ryan adams and some of the newer yeah those guys wade, are my favorites yeah wade style stuff and just they're incredible to me 
so. Yeah, Isabel especially. He's blown up right now. Uh, yeah, and he very much deserves it. And me and Nick Bennard were actually talking about that the other night. We were, we both agreed, you know, we love his past album, Southeastern, and uh, but even his new stuff is more... His new album is amazing. It, it is amazing, but it like Southeastern, if you go listen to it, some of the songs are so edgy, it's like why would anybody want to listen to this? Because he's got, I mean, he's got a song called Elephant, and it's one of my favorites. And I, I played it for a girl this morning, and she was like, why would you want to play that? The cancer song. Yeah, yeah. and it's ta- it's literally talking about a girl that has cancer. And he's like, just talking about it. And it was, in, it was amazing to me. I was like, if you can put that in a song, you can put anything in a song. Here's and, an old picture for you. Oh, Jesus. Where was that? That was in Charleston. Um, it was about ten years ago. We had uh, Jason played at a party with uh, my, you know, one of my great friends is have has this party every year, and that's Shauna from the Drive By Truckers. That's when they were married. Yeah. But um, yeah, he played the show there. He's a real cool guy, and uh, I love him. I love the Drive By Truckers. Especially. Oh yeah, definitely. But, uh, I was sad when I heard he left them, but uh, got to look back and think maybe he knew what he was doing. Yeah, and he does, but. Yeah, his new album, me and Nick were talking about it, you know, it, it appeals to anybody. There's no there's no song on that album that somebody wouldn't like. And if you don't, to and me, he's you got a great band. Yeah. The 400 Unit's a great band. And, yeah. And, and uh, he's, um, there's not a whole lot of guys doing what he's doing right now, at least. I guess it's called more Americana than country but um he does you know just had a number one country album too so. yeah and i, I kind of laughed uh, todd snyder wrote online he was like the battle is over the war is over <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter he did it and he did what nobody else yeah. could do and i i, I completely agree and with that todd statement. snyder's another one of my favorites yeah all those guys are awesome well so. uh, you know I, I ran into you one night at the melody ranch and um you know you yeah, so your band was real tight, and I went up and talked to you during your break, and uh, asked you about all the songs you were throwing down, and you told me you had some originals in the set like that, and, and it's pretty impressive that a guy your age is, you know, composing and coming up with songs, and not satisfied with just being a cover band. So, right. um, you know, um, what's your passion? Passion is music. I mean, really, but like you, you know, you said, you know, God guy my age being able to do that I every time anybody says that I look back and laugh at Brian Brown and Brad Wilson uh, we we did a contest with them at, for that Red Sea thing they did back oh, yeah. at the Hog Creek Ice House when it was open and I was 16 or 17 then and yeah because that place has been closed for well it's been a church now for a few yeah, years yeah but we did that competition and I, I was playing a lot of uh, it was a original competition like you could not play covers unless they told you you could and of course we did baby back back baby got back in their <laughs> turnaround contest that everybody loved and still request to play was that a um, cowpoke version of baby got back it was what i call we what we did was to me and a lot of people incredible because we did we took baby got they threw us a curveball and we threw them a curveball right back because nobody knew that in the competition that we were going to do that and I remember we did baby got back Chris Lowe did crazy train <laughs> uh, I think one of the other songs may have been some other rap song I don't know it was rock and like heavy metal and those were the two genres you had to pick from and they just had pieces of paper out in their hands and we walked up and grabbed one. But they, uh, yeah, when they threw us that curveball, we took it home and we worked on it. And my brother hopped all over it. And did he do the vocals? No, he did not. I did all the vocals and everything. But he had he had this idea after hearing Baby Got Back, and I didn't even think of this. And after I heard it, I was like, okay, yeah, that is a great idea. We'll go with it. So the curveball we threw back at them at that time was we played Fat Bottom Girls. Love that song. And it turned out really, really well. And I remember Brian and Brad literally taking their judging papers and throwing them up in the air. And they were like, it's 
there's no way. Maybe you could, you know, do a baby got fat bottom girls. That would be like a good version. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> nah, but the, they were saying back then, you know, we can't believe some of the songs that I was writing at that time, like Break My Heart Tonight, that'll probably be on the next record. Um, and just a few of the other ones, they were like, we can't believe somebody that young is writing songs like a 40-year-old. And I was like, what? Well, and even some of the stuff on the new record, I was sitting with Kyle Park one night in Houston, and we had just got the tracks in. And I had talked to him, and I was like, man, if you want to listen to him, let's go listen to him. If not, you know, I won't waste your time. And he's like, no, let's go listen to him. And the last song on the new record is my favorite. It's called Alcohol. And I played it for Kyle, and he sat there and he asked me, he goes, are you all right? And I was like, yeah. He goes, did this happen to you? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, holy shit, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, just because you're young, it doesn't mean shit can't happen. <laughs> so, And it did, but whatever. So you, you recently put out a new album a week or so ago, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's new. Is this your first album, or you got some... How many albums have you recorded? I went into the studio by myself when we were originally going to record the first album as a full band, and I had like eight or ten tracks picked out, and it came out to be, I had, we had the budget for that, and then I had like these five other songs that I were like, cool, I still want these out because I think they're really good songs. So I went into the studio uh, with... Uh, Luis Ramos, who was my first bass player and now owns Madison Avenue Studios in McGregor. And I said, hey, Luis, I want to sit down and I want to record these songs acoustic. I want it to be me, a guitar, and a microphone. That's all I want. Maybe a harmonica. I don't know. He's like, okay, we can do that. Cheap, too. So we went in, and I did that. Well, then we never got to do the other album. So that became the first album, and we made two of those songs. So it was more of an full, EP. Full band, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, that was the first album. If you go look it up on Spotify or iTunes, I don't get it. If you look up Brett Hendrix, that one pops up. If you look up Brett Hendrix Band, the new one pops up. The new album, yeah, I consider that our debut album because it is full band. Full band. It, the, the entire thing is full band, but at the same time, there are songs on there from that I was right. One of the first songs I wrote, Passenger Seat. It, I wrote that when I was like 14 or 15 years old. Honestly, can't remember. You did good yeah. in English at school, didn't you? I did. I was an AP. I bet student. you yeah. were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did all that. Uh, but yeah, they uh, we that song is on there, and then there's stuff all the way up to now that I've written. I mean, it's a shame. I went into this album, and we had five songs that we knew were going to be on there, and then we had an eight-song budget, and I threw these three brand new songs alcohol it's a shame and cigarettes drinking and leaving at my brother and my bass player and i said i don't know how these are going to end up i don't know where i want them to go but here's the basis of the song let's build them nobody's ever heard them let's just do it and we did it and it came out great um it's a shame became the title track and alcohol became my favorite track on the album and if you ever want to know what my favorite tracks on albums are, it's going to be the last track on the album is the one that's going to I thought be it was always supposed to be number six. I've yeah. never heard that. No, no, really. Go uh, back and check albums, and it's always like the sixth Well, it's always the last song Well, the last song is side. always like a closer song. It's always the last song of each side. The what? last song of side one, the last song of side two. Well, CDs, I guess, is a little well, different. Yeah, but it's, it hasn't been that way in a while. You know, <laughs> yeah. We've had these things called compact discs for, <laughs> yeah, for real. 25 years. So, uh, and but, now it's no, all computer. But, but go, yeah, now it's all them damn computer. But um, <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, go back, and because uh, a friend of mine told me about this. And uh, sure enough, man, you go check out six song on a lot of albums and it's, a lot of times it's like the most kick-ass song yeah but you I, know yeah i believe that but speaking of, of alcohol i think that's a song i'd really like to hear yeah you want to yeah. play it yeah we can right. do that cool so this is my favorite song on the album it's the last track it's called alcohol i wrote this about a 2 a.m phone call that i got one night and from an ex that i didn't really appreciate <laughs> 
and had kind of played me and all this crap and had heard all these songs you know the only time you ever call is you know when you're drinking whiskey or when you're when you've had a few and all this stuff and i was like all right screw it i'm gonna write one see what i can make of it and it actually allowed me to go back to use some of my blues roots and i ne had never got to do that with any of the songs that i had written and i appreciated that so when you hear it live with the band it's completely different than the way you're about to hear it because i can't do all the guitar fill stuff that i get to do on it so Anyway, here's alcohol.
little hot. <laughs> well, any song with the word alcohol in the title is an awesome song in my book. So. <laughs> and it fits here in the shed. Yeah. Does. Well, <clears throat> you know, I, I thought I'd broach the subject with you. There's a whole lot of what I call shitty country music. It seems to be the trend these days, you know. Luke Bryan, for Florida Georgia Line, Sam Hunt, and that, that, they're they're that, all over the airwaves. And now, I, I mean, are, what do you feel about this? Or are you kind of a big tent guy, and it all fits as a country guy with a blues angle? He's thinking, folks. <laughs> He's thinking. Yeah, bro. He's rubbing your <laughs> chin thoughtfully before um, he spews out his answer. So yeah. let's see what he has to say. If you consider Sam Hunt country, I do not consider you a country music fan. I respect what he does, but it's not country. If you show up on stage with tight jeans, a backwards ball cap, looking like basically a white version of Bruno Mars, <laughs> then no, you are not country music. It's okay um, if you are Bruno Mars. Oh, yeah, it, definitely. Bruno Mars is amazing. I have <laughs> yeah. complete respect yeah. for that guy. Everybody but, loves Bruno Mars. He's not country music yeah 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 and he doesn't call himself country music yeah that's exactly right so that, yeah that's my same hunt spiel um luke bryan when he started out he was good some of the new stuff is still good other parts of the new stuff mainly the singles that you hear on radio no they're not they're, they're pop. They're, they're pop country, and they're yeah. yeah you can have a, sh a genre called pop country, and you see all the crap online with the memes of you know Waylon and Willie and Chris Christopherson and all those guys, and they're like, "Son, that ain't country. I don't know what Mama put up your ass or whatever, <laughs> just shit like that." But at the same time, it's like he's making a lot of money. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. If people like it, people like it, and don't get me wrong. If you're a Luke Bryan fan, be a Luke Bryan fan. If you're a Brett Hendricks fan, be a Brett Hendricks fan. If you're a Jason Isbell fan, be a Jason Isbell fan. Yes. It doesn't matter. If you like music, more power to you. Well, yeah. So but I, I at the same saying. time, don't call it country music if it's not country music. I don't call what I do country music. I call it Texas country music, which is a completely different thing. It's totally di different nowadays. Yeah. I mean, it's a, there's a big chasm between what they used to call... I mean, back in the day when you had Willie and Waylon and Chris... The and, boys... And all those guys. But even back then, but they, were, recall, calling, yeah, it they was, were calling it outlaw country. Yeah. So they were subgenreing it. Yeah, There's no. True. It. Yeah, it wasn't Ray Price. Exactly. So there's just a difference. So and you just live and let live, and there's nothing wrong with that. And um, yeah, if you like, but it you're not being it. influenced right now by the latest Sam Hunt um, sort of. Motown sound. Exactly. Right? And if you show up to a show and you ask me to play some Sam Hunt, I'll probably ask you to leave. <laughs> um, no, not really, but I won't play it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. So. So what are your future plans? Just well, yeah, on, you're kind of hedging your bets. You're getting an education, too. Um, yeah. Uh, are you going to ride that out and get a degree, or are you just going to... I would like to. <laughs> yeah. um, I was always told, even by guys, you know, you hear the saying, you know, if you know it's what you want to do, then you don't have a backup plan, but then you hear the other people that also are very well off in what they love to do, but at the same time, they're like, oh yeah, I still had a backup plan. So, I mean, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Either you can have the backup plan or you can't. I want to have a backup plan. Sort of like Robert Griffin graduating, getting his master's exactly. before he went ahead and decided to be an NFL quarterback. Exactly. Not a bad idea. Yeah. So, cause it's you're probably not, a good idea he has a backup plan. Yeah, might he might be <laughs> <laughs> especially with this team. Yeah, no, um, but I'm an accounting major, and I don't, I don't. I just usually English majors and accounting majors, the brain picks one side, but you've got it going on. I guess you've got, um, <laughs> you've got two sides to your brain. I guess no, <laughs> and I, I laughed. Uh, we were. I had just got, I moved back, I used to live in Nacogdoches, and I went out there to SFA, and I had my fun, and was a marketing major, and was still doing business, and learning how to pursue this on a larger scale, but I moved back home, and didn't really want to do marketing anymore, because I realized how 
You make more money as an accountant. But trust yeah, me. well, yeah, that too. But at the same time, <laughs> it was honestly kind of boring. At least the classes I really? was taking. Really, uh, I've always heard accounting was like um, it was a panty dropper. Yeah, for real. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, I Full of chose, hookers and blow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. hookers and blow. No, I did accounting uh, mainly because I like money. I don't know really who doesn't, but at the same time, it was a money puzzle. It wasn't math. It's math, but it's not math where it's like X plus Y equals Z. I hear you. So I'm not doing algebra. I'm doing, hey, where did this $100,000 go that is, has disappeared? And it's like, okay, let's go here. And this guy's screwed. Um, <laughs> so how long you got left before you can uh, graduate or, or, or you just uh, About be, two years. You know, you're going to be on the, um, what we used to call um, the perennial student plan. <laughs> that was no. me. That was <laughs> that you? <laughs> yeah. it took me five you years. You got to keep it showing took, up every uh, It took me five years to graduate fall. from a two-year college. So. Yeah. All right. <laughs> No, I. Uh, well, he's be, a romancer, so you know he had a lot of other things on his plate. Yeah. No, I I have I'll be done with just the associates, whatever it is in December. I think it's a associates degree with that specification in business or something along those lines. I don't know the exact term for it. And then I'll be going to the Tarleton through. MCCC through MCC, yeah, yeah. to get my accounting degree. And Good I mean, if it, if it all plays out, you know, I get it. I'll be happy. If not, well, and I'm playing music, then I'll still be happy. So. Well, you got those credit hours in the bag. Yeah. And, you know, if you go down that long and lonely road where you got to go through rehab and then you got to check out, <laughs> and then you go ahead and uh, you can always re enlist, or when you're in the can, yeah. you can go ahead and, and get your yeah. other credits and then graduate. That's right. Or uh, actually, Get out with a degree. As that's they right. Say. That's right. It's free yeah. now. So <laughs> yeah, right. No. Yeah, Thanks, Obama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 for real. <laughs> yeah, and the people that know me know I'm the biggest drug head in the world. <laughs> yeah. No, I I laugh. You know, we we I was talking earlier. You know, we go play these jams and stuff, and uh, guys on stage, and they would be singing these songs. And, you know, you throw these hook lines in there that are just screwing with people in the crowd. But there was one night a guy throughout this line and I think it was uh, if you like cocaine and you know what I mean ask Brett Hendricks and he'll know where it is or something like that and I was <laughs> like I, I've never done that in my life I don't even know where you would begin to get it and just all that I think stuff I see know? a defamation lawsuit and it works yeah <laughs> for real no but they uh, they all that stuff you know I'm not a drug head I don't and if you are I mean and that's more, fine. Yeah, more power to yeah. you. No, you know, no, whatever no. makes you happy. Clean up and uh, I, I, I'll, get I'll, a day job. Yeah, no, that's what makes you happy. You know. So you're playing gigs whatever. around, you know, Waco and other. Where else are you going? Are you getting out of state anywhere or? Uh, we're working on it. A buddy of mine is actually moving to New Mexico, so I'm hoping to kind of hop on his tailgate and play somewhere out there. But we we've played in Oklahoma. We played in Ida Bell at a casino, and then we played up. Uh, by Durant at One Star. I mean, uh, not One Star. Uh, Choctaw. Yeah. And uh, we played at a little club up there. You played Choctaw Bingo when you? Uh, I mean, uh, the song when you play up there? No, I did not. <laughs> I it's, didn't great. it's a long song. You'll never learn all the words. <laughs> I, didn't even know, I didn't even know that was a thing. So I have to go look that up. No. Uh, but yeah, we uh, I, going to Nacogdoches. It kind of helped me out there and. Uh, I, I've played out there at Bonita Creek College. I actually used to work there. That was basically the equivalent to Melody Ranch and Wild West out there. So we'd have... I got to see Ronnie Millsap there. And I no think way. that's that's the number one concert I'll never forget seeing there. Because it took them like 10 to 15 minutes to get him up on stage because he's blind. But I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, he literally sat down, played 90 minutes, never stopped. And it was the one of the best shows I've ever seen. Well, he's a pro. He's a yeah. He was a graduate. But he of, was still like, I think he's eighty two, maybe. Is he that se- old or now? Seventy yeah, yeah. something. Late seventies, at least. So, yeah, somewhere in there, and it was incredible. And it, all of his songs sound great. And and he's I, got a great voice. Yeah, so I gained a lot of respect for all that. But you know, I like I was saying, you know, I've had luck out there. Uh, we went out and played in Stephenville with a buddy of mine, and we played down south and right now we're trying to work more west texas and up north 
And uh, any memorable gigs? Something that really stands out? Memorable gigs uh, around here or anywhere? Anywhere? Ma yeah, mainly the fair around here. Uh, playing with Lee Bryce, that was really cool. Uh, then we got to play with Aaron Watson at Melody Ranch uh, cool. right after he came out with his most recent album. It was completely sold out. Uh, William Clark Green is a good buddy of mine. We've played a few shows with him, and he's always a lot of a lot of fun. That's not really a memorable gig. That's more of just a memorable night after he played the Zach and Jim blowout. We got a little hammered, and it was, <laughs> it was pretty bad. Um, there are people that hear this. Uh, they'll remember the Snapchat stories about that night that were pretty funny that I got made fun of for about a month. <laughs> that, that was was there a video to go along with that? A few of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God damn this age we live in. <laughs> yeah, for real. You can't, <laughs> you can't even take a pass anymore. without being on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. No, we woke up in a hotel room hallway and there was an empty bottle of Jaeger between us. Mm. And I looked at Will and he's on the phone with some girl talking about pizza. And sure, like, you want your dad and mom to hear this? Oh, yeah, they're fine. Okay. They know this story. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, no, but they, uh, he's sitting on the phone talking about pizza, and I looked down at this bottle, and I said, Will. And he's like, pepperoni, what? <laughs> and uh, I look at that bottle, and I said, did we drink all of that? He goes, yeah. Every last drop, yeah. Gotta hate Jaeger. I hate Jaeger. Oh, God, I so hate for the more. fact that I don't even remember that, that was... Exciting. If you would have had Periscope at that time. <laughs> For real. Man, <laughs> you could have got some followers. Probably. No, but, uh, you know, I've had fun with those guys. Uh, mainly, you know, memorable shows come and go, but the friendship. What's, thing. what's, uh, let's, let's kind of do the opposite here. What's the shittiest show you ever played? <laughs> what's the show that you showed up and, like, nobody showed up? Uh, that happens a lot when you go play acoustics. Um, <laughs> no, uh, shittiest show we've ever had. Because we played a uh, show in Colleen one time. Let me tell the story real quick. And I don't even remember the bar. This was like 15 years ago, and or longer, 20 years ago. And there was one, there was two guys in the crowd the whole night. And they loved us. Man, they got on stage and sang songs with us and everything. And then we, we're done playing. We go next door to the bar area, and the bar's packed with people. I'm like, did you not realize there's a band next door? <laughs> well, we still got they, paid. Maybe they did. And, uh, That's probably what happened. They said, hey, close the there. fucking door. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, they... Uh, That's the worst I, juice, jukebox I've ever heard. Yeah. No, I think the crappiest show we ever had... Like I mean, I had turned when everything was, goes wrong. You know, you, yeah, no, guitar's no, no, no. out of tune. Yeah, you know, you got a bad connection. Um, you can't hear yourself. Yeah, no, I think we did it. Uh, I won't say the exact name of the town because it'll probably give it away. But it was down south, just a little bit. It's in the Waco area, but it was down south. Temple, uh, Lorena. Yeah. No, it was not Lorena. Uh, that is my hometown. So yes. yeah, we didn't have a bad show there, but we did play this show in this town at this bar and the person who owned this bar promised us all this money it was supposed to be my birthday bash and I think seven people showed up and every one of them were my family <laughs> <laughs> and I what made matters worse that night because nobody showed up she didn't want to pay us Yeah. and then on top of that earlier in the night during the show at the time, we use in ear monitors now, but we used to use floor monitors. I busted my ass on a floor monitor. I tripped, fell flat on my back, and my brother and the, the band just started laughing. And I was like, at that point, we were already like, this couldn't get any worse. And then I fell, and it was like, okay, it just got a little bit worse, but whatever, we're just going to laugh about it. And. Uh, you know, those make for good stories later. Well, and you're young, so you need like 80 more of those stories yeah. to grow. And I, I think another another one of those stories that was... And, and like, these weren't the worst shows ever, but when I lived in Knack, I did a Tuesday night uh, singer-songwriter night, and these are some of my favorite uh, memories of living out there. It, there were nights... I did it every Tuesday from 9 to midnight. There were nights it would be me, the bouncer, and the bartender. And we would literally sit there. I would play like four to five songs, get off stage, and we would sit there and play pool. 
and nobody would ever come in. <laughs> no, I mean nobody. It would be us three, and then the owner would come in at like eleven fifty-five, and he would pay me. <laughs> and we would just sit there and we would drink the entire night, and it was it was great. I'd have friends come pick me up and take me back to the dorm room, and uh. That's it's called paying your dues, man. Yeah, it, That's is. What it is. And I mean, there was nothing wrong with it because I had fun doing it. Because we were, I, those guys became some of my best friends. And, uh, but even you know, some of those stories became songs at, from those nights and or made it influence. Well, as long as you're having fun, I mean, that's yeah. To me, playing music, if you're having fun, that's that's the number one thing. Yeah, playing music, having fun. The crowd doesn't always matter. Those right. are having fun too. Open so bar not. tabs always nice. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, that 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 helped those situations. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you seen or heard anybody lately that um, kind of grabbed you by the horns? I mean, you talked about Jason Isbell. And is there anyone else? Jason I mean, and Ryan have, Ryan Adams. They have both grabbed my attention for a while now, yeah. and I laugh because my ex hated listening to them, but I would just blare it. How could she hate Ryan Adams? I mean, that guy. Ask her. I don't know. I don't it know. just. It's probably why we're not. Maybe together. she's a Brian Adams fan. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But she didn't even like him either, because we used to play Summer '69. She'd be like, "What's that?" <laughs> Young. Not a pick 'em, right? No. Um, we'll edit that out. <laughs> um, you didn't mention a name, so. Not, yeah, that works. <laughs> it could be any girl. Yeah. Uh, certain people know who that's about. But uh, no, lately. Um, are you a Sturgill Simpson fan? Yes, I am a Sturgill fan. A uh, big Sturgill fan. And, you know, a lot of people don't know who he is. But, but his, 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 is. his, yeah, but his guitarist is just oh, beyond yeah. sick. Definitely. <laughs> uh, but here lately, uh, guys that have been grabbing my ears, uh, one that has actually become kind of a friend of mine, Sam Riggs. He's doing pretty well. Um, Sam Riggs and the Night People. We open for him. And his, mainly what's grabbing my attention with him is his show his live show it's incredible um i've never seen a guy besides hunter hayes and yeah i'm a hunter hayes fan i'll go ahead well, and the guy's that. got he's chops out the it, ass exactly he can play guitar like crazy and i i went and saw him when i was like a sophomore in high school he played at house of blues dallas and we walked it my me and my mom and dad walked in and it looked like a taylor swift concert because there was nothing but like 16 to 25 year old girls and I was just like well I got the best of both worlds this guy can play the shit out of a guitar and there's a lot of hot girls you around. Yeah. Yeah. so that's cool but um, yeah he uh, Hunter's one of those guys um, but Sam Riggs I've never seen anybody else besides Hunter play that many instruments on stage I mean Sam he, he'll sit there during a the show he'll play acoustic guitar electric guitar fiddle banjo drums Mandolin? Uh, I Maybe. think he may have. Well, if you can play fiddle, you can yeah, play mandolin. Yeah, but probably. I think one of his guitar players may have picked that up. But, I mean, he, he played all of these instruments, and then he still sang, and he still had the crowd involved, and it was just a great show. And then uh, another guy that has caught my attention lately is Parker McCollum. I've been listening to some of his stuff lately. Are they Texans? <laughs> yeah, he yeah. played at Wild West a few weeks ago. I was actually yeah. supposed to open that show, but I had already canceled a show before that at this place that I had to play that night, so I didn't want to cancel twice in a row. So I went ahead and played there. Yeah, that rep will follow you around. Yeah, so, and I mean, some places understand that, you know, if you want to go, if I cancel one show, hey, I'm going to go open for this guy, can we have a makeup date? Because this is actually probably going to, you know, get my name out there just a little bit more. You know, most places have grown to understand that, and I respect that from club owners and stuff like that but some you know I don't want to do that more than once and you know piss somebody off because that's not fair to them and it's also not fair to me if I don't get the gig again and so I, I try to keep it to the point don't where, burn too many bridges on yeah the way there. So, so I don't believe that we've or that I have ever burned a bridge with a club but I don't know maybe that story I told earlier about that place down south that may <laughs> that may have done it that one but clubs are usually the one that burn the bridges yeah. So let's, yeah. let's talk about your your band. Uh, who are the members, and how long have you guys been playing together? Um, my brother is the drummer. He has been with us for now, going on four or five years. And 
actually maybe six because he came in he was on the road full time when I first started out he was being a sound tech for a guy named Mark McKinney and then he got off the road with him and he came and started playing with me and uh, I mean we had a lot of fun back then we had another guy playing bass and then eventually uh, got and the deal with the band was we started out as a blues band because that's all I played and then I started writing and it was more of the Texas style so we started playing Texas and we got we just kind of grew with players and the uh, our bass player is Truett Teague and uh, he has been with us going on now for about two or three years I think two and uh, it's been it's been a lot has happened since that band's been together because it's we've got we play three piece and we try we've tried to do four piece we've had guys come in and play guitar and they're great There's the less members in the band the better the, yeah it's gonna be tighter and that's well, I've seen I've seen the video of uh, you guys playing and uh, you had an older guy playing slide and, and lead guitar and yeah that's Kenny well. uh, yeah. Kenny Zink he he used to play with us quite a bit he's kind of I wouldn't say retired uh, but he he we travel a little bit more than he would like and I, I get that um we're we're young guns and you know we want to go 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 and i mean he's in his 50s and i mean i hope i'm doing that they're doing this at that age and you know it, it, if i can be jagger and be doing this till i'm 90 i'll be <laughs> yes, till then, right there's nothing wrong with that but you know i get why he wants to slow down he's been doing it long enough and he's got his own business but Sure. Uh, if you come watch us now, <coughs> we may be adding a keyboard player, but um, we're looking into that. Uh, but if you come see us right now, like if you came and saw us this weekend, we're playing West Fair and Rodeo. You're gonna see us three piece, and it's yeah. a great show. I've ne I've had guys, even bigger guys like uh, that we go play with and open for. They're like, I've never seen a band sound as full as y'all do you guys sound great and the, the night i saw you you were a three-piece and that's why i came up and talked to you because you, you had a, a full sound yeah. and um you easily switched you know were able to do some lead stuff and uh, you're playing your telly most of the night yeah and you were um it was really it, it was good it was very good it was a good show and and that's why you're here yeah and that that's one of the things you know i, I would love to have a fourth player in the band because it gives me just a little bit more freedom when it comes to playing lead, and that's what it, that's what I do. I play lead. I I will never uh, consider myself a lead singer before a lead guitarist and or a, just a lead player in general. And you know, people are like, "Well, you're the front man. You know, you're the you're the lead singer." No, I yeah, my name's on the cover of the band, but I'm the lead guitar player. I li I like it being that way. I like being able to do what I can do. And it, it's always fun to be able to have somebody that can play guitar well enough and know the songs well enough to s keep that sound of the core going to where I can have that much more fun sure. on stage. So. Well, cool. You know, it's starting to cool off a little bit. So I think it's probably to 99 degrees in here. Yeah, for <laughs> real. Let's uh, heat it up a little bit and play another song for us. Sure. All right. Hey, we want to thank Brett Hendricks for being in the shed. And... Uh, Check him out. You got a website? Yeah. We, band .com, right? Yeah, we got that, and then we got the Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. Um, you can find him on there, and you get your songs on iTunes and all that good stuff. Or yeah, Spotify we got. And, yeah, we got Spotify. Man, I laugh when one of my buddies. You I, getting and, those big checks from Spotify? <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> No, I actually, I thought you didn't get paid from that. And then I got well, on. You, you get like yeah, a couple of pennies paid, here and there. Yeah, a couple of pennies. I got on and our, we just released the other album. And my old album had like a dollar and 43 cents from Spotify. <laughs> and it, yeah, it shocked me. I was like, holy yeah. crap, we made money on Spotify. I, I've made about $10 and something. I checked today on, on, on a couple of songs that I've done. I got about $10 or something racked up. Well, you can't even. About time, it's about time to retire. Well, you can't even buy a 16 ounce beer at the store with that. Well, they won't even send you a check unless it's like 50 bucks or something, so I'm never going to get paid, pretty much. Well, you can always come here and drink my beer. That's what I'm doing right yeah. now. All right. So let's uh, thank Brett Hendricks for being in the shed this afternoon and uh, enduring the heat. 
And he's gonna. And there's a breeze. There's a breeze. Feels pretty, feels all right. So he's gonna play us another song, man. So in the interview, I talked about you know those Tuesday nights in Knack and really, yeah, you know, being in the fraternity out there. I was an ATO, and uh, every night was a different night. <laughs> and uh, you know, we got. I eventually was walking back to my dorm room when I lived in the dorms one night with my roommate and. Uh, he made this comment, and he said, we went bar hopping tonight. And I was like, damn, we do that every night. So about 15 minutes right after he said that, I sat down and had already had this song written in my head, and it came out. This was probably going to be the first single to radio. It's called Bar Hopping. So. I'm ready to pop A few tops down at the bar Yeah, well, this one's slow Let's drive around We can hop all over this town I don't know about you But I'm ready to drink Cause, man, I'm tired of going slow And not doing anything Let's go far